Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and today, uh, continuing my Harvest Festival prep, we have October 2nd, uh, it's a Sunday. We are uh, gonna be selling some of the tree farm trees and other trees that have been yamadoried over the years and grown on uh, this five acre ranch. So I am uh, digging up some of the seedlings at various sizes so that I have you know, different price points and a uh, good variety of trees to sell at the Harvest Festival. So uh, pretty excited about it. I got a bunch of Rose of Sharon yesterday. See different sizes. It's a nice sized one. Uh, they come up relatively easily and they're very forgiving. So I don't mind digging them up in the fall and putting them in these pots with mostly topsoil and some really um, well biodegraded mulch. So I've got them in different sizes, different pots. I got a few maples. And also spent some time in the tree farm weeding an insane amount of wildflowers that I just kind of let go because I'm allergic to bees and it was a good food source for them. So they, I let them take over and now that it's autumn, it's time to clean it up. And uh, we got about 40 to 50 of the white spruce trees loaded up on the trailer. And uh, anyways, the mission today so I have these two really nice terracotta pots. They're large. And what I want to do for the main display is uh, plant my two prized Picea Glauco white spruce trees in these pots and have Laura decorate them for Christmas. So uh, even though the, the majority of my trees are going to be sitting there in sandbags, they'll be able to see the dressed up potential um, for what they could use them for. So, um, yeah, we're going to go on a little hunt for some Picea Glauca and take a look at the plans for Harvest Festival 2022. So that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. All right, so I have this little utility trailer that's really nice and light. Uh, light enough for me to pull it with the Volvo. I actually have a hitch on the Volvo and not the Jeep. Uh, and so I did a nice little stack in here yesterday. I drove it right into the backyard down to the tree farm Laura helped me load these up. So I have them kind of Stacked like Tetris so that I could fit more What I think I'm gonna do is actually move these from the back and stack them up on the tables Because they'll still sit flat nice on there. That'll open up the back for some of the heavier things I have to load these are the terracotta pots, and they are large. Let's see, so this trailer's four feet wide. So, I don't know, about 18 inch pot. Yeah, 18 inch going across. Got my tables in there, three fold out tables for display. And I have, well, anyways, you guys see these trees kind of skipped over that part but these are the five-year-old uh, white spruce I got a great deal on them planted them in sandbags a bunch of different mediums just to test it out I got 500 of them about 375 exist today so I was thinking about taking this ladder and another ladder and opening them and kind of displaying um, the Christmas trees on it since the ladder's in the shape of a Christmas tree. But then I figured, you know what? Well, I still don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I might just put my spider plants and indoor hanging plants sitting on the steps so they have more room to cascade. So yeah, I think that's what I've decided to do. So like this one's beautiful, but it's also already in one of my displays. So I have about 50 in here and that leaves, you know, about 300 left in the garden that aren't loaded up. So I'm going to pick my two best and we'll pot those up. I've got some nice ones in here. I don't think all these are in sandbags though. Oh, oh, oh look at that. That's a nice one. All right, cool. Wow, that bad boy's tall. That is, that must 
be one that's in the ground. Well, not in the ground. This is a raised tree bed with like older wood underneath everything, kind of as a barrier. So I pulled out that tall one and <laughs> it wasn't a sandbag and it's got a nice little maple growing out of it. Decent sized trunk too. So I think because, you see that? Yeah, so this is the maple on the right and then the white spruce on the left. I think because it's in a sandbag, I should be able to remove that maple because that is, an, that is a strong looking spruce right there. <clears throat> Let's go. I think the rest of these in here, there's some really nice ones, but I think they're in the ground and I don't want to uh, disrupt them. Like I checked out this one. That was nice. That was in the ground. I didn't look at that one, but we could come back to it. And then this one was in the ground. I'd rather get one that's in a sandbag so there's less root disruption. And then, you know, people that buy the ones that are in the sandbags and they have questions, you know, they could, you know, they could totally pot them up this year. Still, this isn't a bad time. They're established trees. I might not leave them out for the full cold. I might pull them in the garage or something like that. But. Okay, so you see, <laughs> these were all really tall flowers with thousands of bees on them. So we kind of cleared off the squash bed. We've got some nice butternut squash still growing. Really small this year, but that's probably because they were covered in flowers. Um, yeah. This is the strawberry, raspberry, blackberry bed. That's just a disaster. And then along the fence line here, all the way down, and then all the way down here and around. These are all where the spruce trees are. So Laura and I kind of took from this area. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to do some digging because it's still a mess down here and uh, see if we can't find a prize tree. Stand by. All right, so here are the top five candidates. All about the same height. This one on the right with the maple growing out of it is just dominant. Um, but I saw a couple of nice thick trunks doing well. If you notice, I picked the stronger trees that also have more vertical growth because they are younger. So if we're going to hang, even if they're light ornaments, um, for those two pots to make it look like a Christmas tree, we're going to have to have, you know, with them going upwards, that little bit of weight, I'll pull it down horizontal, it'll add to it. If I had the horizontal, they'd be just drooping and it would look terrible. So let's get these potted up. So Steli just got up from her nap ski. You wanna help pick Steli? I'm like, let's go pot these and I didn't pick two, so. I'm thinking, hmm, thinking this one on the right and then the second one in there. I think as far as height goes. Can you hold the camera, baby, and I'll measure it on my leg? Here's up to mid thigh. Here's up to just below. So that's not too shabby. They both have the thickest trunk, so I think that's what we're going to go with. And then I'll just add one, two, and three to the trailer for uh, extra sales. Now stand by. Steli, I need to borrow Mommy as the cameraman. And you get out of the pump. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got one potted up. It was kind of test phase, so I did it off camera because I don't have that much memory left. But we got it potted up nice. Looking nice. Topped it off with some nice bark mulch. And I had to cut it completely out of the sandbag because some of the more dominant roots grew through. But whatever. This one will have the challenge of separating the maple, and then I'm just going to pop the maple down into that little pot right there and I'll list that one for sale as well no 
Oh yeah, cooperate. Come on. Oh yeah, the maple's got like one dominant. So obviously I didn't intend to grow the maple, but pretty cool shape <laughs> to a little volunteer from seed. So that'll go in here. Boom. And you know, I'm bringing a lot of trees that haven't been pruned before because people may want full size trees or they may want trees that they prune themselves or right there at the table, you know, if they have questions, I can do it with them and show them. So I think all three options, that's why I'm not really pre-pruning any of the trees that I'm bringing for sale. So I'm just gonna get this one potted up y'all and then get it loaded in the trailer and further uh, setting up for fall harvest, or excuse me, the harvest festival on October 2nd at the Lions Pavilion in Bantam off of Route 209, Bantam, Connecticut. So I'm Jared Paul from my family to yours. Cheers. What's up, y'all?